it actually all began with my son, my 11 year old son, who had a project um, from school to work uh, on the internet. So he was given a research project to do on the internet and it was on earthquakes and he asked me to help him. So we put earthquakes into Google and we got 150,000 responses and inevitably we went to Wikipedia and we looked at Wikipedia and it was three pages long and for an 11 year old child it was just too much. And I'm a TV producer and I thought, well, wouldn't it be better to have a little short two to three minute film that engages the child, actually shows the child what an earthquake looks like um, and gives the science and background to it. So it was all thanks to my 11 year old son. That's when I decided to do it. Earthquakes are one of the most dramatic and deadly natural hazards. Violent shaking and vibrations of the Earth's crust. They strike without warning and can cause catastrophic damage. But what causes them? It's all down to the movement of the Earth's tectonic plates. Earthquakes can occur along any type of plate boundary. The plates don't move smoothly, but can get stuck, so pressure builds up. They can then slip suddenly, causing a violent release of pressure as an earthquake. We invested in its development uh, over about a two-year period because uh, it was a long process to try and determine the most effective way to make a quality and precise two to three minute film. What was critical was that we spent time with teachers and we tried to understand what a teacher needed for the classroom and also that we spent time with children and with young people to see what kind of content would engage them. So the first step was to determine length and style and character of the content. Um, and that we did through testing in Scotland. We, we were um, testing in, in over 200 schools in Scotland. We got a lot of feedback from that. The next stage was then to find the right people to make the films. The problem with television is that it's traditionally been a very um, structured process. So uh, a producer would commission a scriptwriter and then would work with an editor and there's a big team involved and it wasn't economic to do that for a, a, an educational market. So we had to go and find young people uh, who, had, who were multi-skilled. They could write their own scripts, they could cut their own product, um, they could use Final Cut Pro, the, the Apple editing tools. So that in fact we have now over 30 young people who are making the films themselves. They work with writers to an extent, but then the whole creation is done by one person. The world's major land biomes are tropical rainforest, the savanna, desert, tundra, deciduous forests, coniferous forests. At each stage we have academics, so we've used academics actually from, from all over the world. We, we now have a network of more than 100 teachers and academics around the world who are reviewing our films at the script stage. That's the very important point where they can determine exactly the content that will go into our films. So everything is verified um, by, by scientists and by teachers. And of course the raw material we're using is a lot of it is BBC um, or major broadcasters. So they themselves have done all their fact checking. Um, you know, it, it's very much a reliable and, and a precise resource for teachers. Abiotic factors are non-living components of ecosystems, such as the climate and soil. Biotic factors are the living components and refer to all living organisms found in an ecosystem. We've always felt that most websites when it comes to film, teachers are just overwhelmed. You know, there are hundreds of, of, of clips of film. If you go onto YouTube, there are 400,000 educational videos on YouTube. It's just far too much for a teacher. So what we did was we, we created the mind map structure, which breaks the, the, the content down into topics, and modules and individual pages that are then presented as a mind map. 
So a teacher has a choice of six or seven films, all particular to the curriculum, particular to the subject they've got to teach, and there's no need to go. They're literally in two clicks, they're exactly where they want to be. We are exposed to radiation every day, from our mobile phones to cosmic radiation from the sun. But what is radiation? We're looking at personalization so that uh, teachers can actually create their own mind maps, um, use the content in their own way, uh, create pay playlists uh, and many other personalization aspects of, of the product. Radioactivity is the nuclear decay of unstable elements. In order to reach stability, atoms within these elements emit excess energy or mass, nuclear radiation. When nuclear radiation... Making you know, televised content films is very expensive. It's many millions of pounds um, that's been invested in producing the films we've made. Um, so far we've made over a thousand films um, and over the next two years we'll be making another two thousand films. Teachers are using our content in two ways. One is obviously in the classroom and within the classroom they very often uh, integrate it into their lesson so they, off they might open up with a film and then come back another one or two occasions within a 45 minute period um, to, to uh, use our resource. And we found that, that the teachers, they want support material. They don't want material that completely removes them from the experience that the child is having. This, our resource is not about children sitting at a computer, you know, watching without any involvement of the teacher. The second um, use we found that the teachers are making of our films is to encourage the children to do a little bit of work themselves at home. It might be in preparation for a lesson, it might be after a lesson. And uh, often the teacher has dealt with the key science in the lesson, but then would like the children to look at some contextual examples of that science. So they might have looked at heat transfer or an energy transfer in the lesson, and then they go home and we've got a great little film, three minute film about how Formula One cars are using the energy generated by the tires um, and the wheels in the car then to feed back and, and, and um, provide extra thrust and energy into the car's engine. Clear examples that help the child realize how critical science is to everything that they have in their lives. A button on the steering wheel triggers the system to release this stored energy, releasing an extra 80 horsepower which can be used to power past opponents. And the challenges of making the film, or well, the films, it's always about the scripts. You know, it's, it's getting precise language. It's making sure we get the balance right. You know, in three minutes, you can't actually communicate that much. And so it's really ensuring that our films emphasize one or two key learning points. They give the children enough time to understand those points, to digest them, and actually to have it as deep learning that they've really understood. The inner core is at the center of the Earth, a solid ball of iron and nickel reaching 5,500 degrees centigrade. With its immense heat energy, the inner core is the engine room of our planet. We're now moving on to maths and we've made 150 films that help mathematics teachers give context to their subject. So that might be, um, we've got a wonderful film uh, talking about the logarithms that are used um, in the creation of the internet and all the um, digital technology that, that uh, we use every day of our lives. Uh, we've got a fantastic group of films on the history of maths. So looking at the early mathematicians' attempts to measure the circumference of the Earth using basic trigonometry. Um, just good examples where children need to understand the relevance of what they're learning. And I'd certainly encourage Anybody, you know, if you're, if you're an artist, if you're a photographer, if you're a game producer, if you're making television programming, education is a fascinating place to be and there's a lot we can do to help the most important people of all in education, which is the teachers. 
In a stable ecosystem, everything coexists in a sustainable way. Each niche is filled and kept in check by others and their environment, keeping life on Earth in perfect balance.